Hi, Red Bank friends. It's Dawn, and this week we're going to design a water slide. It's been getting really hot outside. Lots of people have water parks nearby in New Jersey, but if you can't get to one or are a little bit hesitant about using one right now during COVID, you can make your own backyard fun. One of the sites I'm going to take you to is the PBS Kids site, and they have a special section called Design Squad. If you look up here, you can watch videos and learn about different scientific topics. You can actually design and plan out your own creation. You can build different things around your house and you can play games. There's even a global challenge where you can create with people from around the world. This is really cool. This is new over here where it says, wow, this is this week's wow. And it's called instant ice cream. That is absolutely perfect because that is next week's challenge. So if you want to get a jump start and watch that, feel free. I just want to show you about this site because it was so awesome. They have so many more STEM challenges in case you want to explore different days of the week other than Thursday when we forecast this. So let's take a look and see what it's all about. Ten fun ways to turn your backyard into a water park. I found this great site when I was surfing around to find some good things for us this week, and it actually has some easy to do tricks and tips for creating water fun in your backyard. Let's take a quick look and see. It says store-bought slip and slides are often too flimsy and they don't last long and they're really too small to give you the kind of thrills you want. So you can make your own by using plastic sheeting coated with baby shampoo. It's easy, affordable, and tons of fun. And you can get that at your like Home Depot store. Water balloon pinata. That looks awesome. So if we set up a rope between two trees and just attach a bunch of water balloons hanging, you can swing at it and get really, really wet. Ocean to go, using your garden hose and a couple other materials, you can make exciting giant sack of water to slip and slide in. And if you want to get even more creative and a little messy, you can add some food coloring and glitter in there to play with. Water arms race, where you have two different teams and you have to try to get all the water from one bucket out of the bucket and into another using the water guns. You can also do it with containers if you don't have water guns available. Water balloon dodgeball. Look at that picture. I bet it's absolutely as fun as it looks. Water balloons crash into you a lot softer than if you get hit by a dodgeball. Lots of fun. Water Me Run. It is a game based on throwing and blocking. Each child is given a bat to defend a goal, a bucket from an incoming water balloon resulting in plenty of splashes, so you're trying to get your team to have less water in the bucket than the competing team. Get your head in the game. Balloon catch is another play on the classic baseball, with one player throwing balloons to his partner who attempts to catch as many as possible in order to beat the other team. Sounds easy? Think again. The catcher can only use a bowl strapped to his helmet, like a bike helmet, to capture the water balloons. This game is perfect for older kids who appreciate the skill and strategy required. Eco-friendly water bombs. They're made from common kitchen sponges. And they are eco-friendly and reusable and deliver the same wetness as traditional water balloons easy do-it-yourself activity. Kid wash. I've actually seen this in person before with a bunch of preschoolers that drive their little cars and trucks and bikes through. It's like a car wash for kids using PVC pipe. This one you'll definitely need a grown-up to help you with, but it looks absolutely cool and amazing. Bucket dump. Again, a little more sophisticated with making like a real water park in your backyard, 
where buckets of water get dumped on your head. So notice there's a tutorial here by clicking this link that will tell you exactly how to build it and how to get yours working. Awesome. Let's take a look at this week's challenge where we're going to make a model, a mini water slide. And the idea is that the kids have a pool and they're getting kind of bored in the summer day just climbing up the ladder to get into the pool. They want a more fun way to get wet. So they decide to create a water slide leading to the swimming pool. It's a hot summer day and you've grown bored with entering your pool by the stairs and jumping in. How will you solve this problem? So your challenge is to build a model of a water slide for at least one toy figurine. So it's not going to be big enough for you to actually go in, but if you have a Lego figure or a little Minecraft figure or something like that, you can use that as your person to go down the water slide. Your slide has to safely hold one rider at a time with no leaks on the slide. Riders cannot fall off the slide. There must be a collection pool for the water. Riders have to be able to get from the ground to the top of the slide. Give us some minutes to complete your challenge. We're going to leave it open-ended and take as long as you need. And if you want to work in a team of a couple people, great. If you want to try it solo, that's okay too. You may use as many or as few of the supplies as you would like, but no additional items can be used. I will show you that list of supplies in a minute. And at the end of the challenge, nobody can be holding the slide up, but you can pour water down the slide with the rider. So let me pause this one second, find you the list of materials that you're able to use. Hi, welcome back. Okay, the materials that are suggested in this challenge include popsicle sticks, tin foil, straws, pencils, plastic wrap or sandwich bags, tape or glue, cardboard squares, solo cups, water with blue food coloring optional, and toilet paper or paper towel rolls. So those are the items that you can gather and use. If you want to use something else, I think that would be okay. Just explain it in your video why you chose to use that supply. All right, here we go. Welcome back, friends. You can see I have a whole bunch of supplies laid out in front of me. So what I have here is some water. Can't have a water slide without that. Some tin foil. scissors, paper towel or toilet paper tube would work. I actually took a paper towel tube and cut it in half because I'm going to use it for my structure and for the actual slide. A little toy figurine. Monsieur our children's librarian gave me this awesome troll to use to go down a water slide. Some saran wrap because we can't have a water slide lasting too long with just paper. The paper would get wet and soggy, so we're going to protect it by wrapping it up in some saran wrap first or plastic wrap. And then the first time we did this, I didn't remember the instructions about the ladder. So you can't have a ladder. I thought maybe I could just use this cardstock paper, which is really thick paper, and fold it and make it into a set of stairs. But that would be very much like a ladder. So I don't think that would work either. So what I decided I'm going to do is try to make a pulley system. Kind of like how a elevator would work if it weren't mechanical. And have this little bucket, which is a little yogurt container, taped to this string then put through the center of the paper towel tube so I can pull the string and thereby lift up the bucket. That's my thought. Now remember in science, our first attempt definitely does not always succeed, but I think that we're on the right track. So let me go ahead and tape this string to our bucket. I may have made it a little too long, but we can make adjustments with the scissors in a moment. Um, I thought about making a hole through this cup 
And I'm looping it through and knotting it into the bucket to make it a little stronger and more secure. But our troll is very lightweight. He only weighs a few ounces. So I don't think that's going to be a problem just using the tape to hold it up. I'm actually just going to tape on the inside. Put two pieces to make it extra secure. Now notice it will tilt. I'm not too worried about that because it doesn't look like it's going to tilt completely over. It's just going to be a little bit on an angle, which will help the troll actually step into it rather than having to jump up to get into the bucket. So I'm okay with that. Let's see if that part works. If I bring this up, I'm definitely going to cut part of this off. Bring this up and let's see if it brings up to the top. Bring it up. There it goes. You can see it being raised up, up, up to the top. Pretty much a success so far. Okay, so let's take a look at the slide itself. I'm going to be using a portion of the paper towel tube. I cut it in half one direction and then the other direction. I bent this edge because I want to make a lip to get as close to the structure as possible. And I am going to cheat just a little bit and I'm going to use a stapler to actually staple it to the structure just to make it extra strong. It could probably work with tape as well, but I'm going to do that. But before I do that, I need to prepare it to be able to withstand water. So I'm going to wrap it in a little foil first. I'm not going to use this plastic wrap quite yet. I have another spot that I need to use that in, so we'll try. It. So I'm going to just cut a piece of the foil. And remember, your design certainly doesn't have to look anything like mine. This is just the idea that I was thinking about in my head. And remember, I don't like to give you too many examples ahead of time because I want you to be creative and come up with your own wonderful solutions. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up. I don't even need a piece that big, so I'm going to just trim this more. I kind of just rip the loom foil, but I'm cutting it just because it's a little neater and easier. And then I'm going to... Seal this. Probably with a piece of tape to seal it together. This part I'm just going to wrap around, pinch down and bend. Same thing with this part, just wrap backward, pinch down and bend. That actually should hold it. I don't even think I need the tape. So that's going to be the actual slide part where the troll goes down and the water slides into the pool. For the pool, I have a regular styrofoam bowl. Perfect. So let's give it a try. I'm trying to remember which end I bent. I think it's this end. It's hard to feel right now, but I'm pretty sure. This tapeworm might be a little bit big to fit in this space, but I'm going to make it work. There we go. Perfect. Bend that out a little bit, and it's going to go right inside. Oh, first problem, look at this. The weight of the slide is pulling my structure on an angle so it's not stable. Remember, it has to support itself. So I have a couple options. If the slide were to stay near the edge of the pool, then the bottom of my structure stays flat. The further out it goes into the middle of the pool, the longer angle I would need and it creates this gap of space right here. So I think I'm going to take 
the stapler and staple my water slide to the edge, to the rim of the bowl. And if you have a slide, it's normally where your slide will come right to the edge of the pool anyway. Normally, normally we'll do that. You can have some slides that do drop you off into the deep end. Okay. Much better. Okay. I'm actually happy with that so far. Let me move some of these materials out of our way. The other thing we need to do is be able to pour water. Oops. There we go. Pour water down the slide. So I'm thinking that since the directions and the challenge said we could manually by ourselves with our hands go ahead and pour the water down. I don't think we need to have like a bucket up top that tilts and drops the water or a hose. I think we're okay with just pouring it down that way. So let's give this all a try. And the reason I have plastic wrap is because if we needed to, I could put plastic wrap over the structure so the water wouldn't accidentally spill down there. But that would make it a little more difficult to use the pulley system for our troll. So let's move things out of the way. Take some water. Troll going into the bucket. Fits perfectly. I will manually have to take the troll out when it gets to the top, but that's okay. The directions say that's all right. Okay, so I'm going to have to redo this because somehow I turned it upside down when I wasn't looking. So that won't work. Here we go. Feed it through the top of the structure. Get ready to pull. Remember, it's going to tilt, but hopefully the troll will not fall out. Success to the top. Take the troll out. Goes over. Oh, I do have to see who would fall into the tube. Watch this. Whoops. I need to make it down the slide. There he is. Still standing. So let us go ahead and put a little bit of foil on top of there. So the troll has a surface to walk on to get to the actual slide. to leave a little opening for the string to work on the pulley system. I think we're okay now. Okay. Revision number one. Remember, that's what we do in this time is learn how to improve our designs when they don't work right the first time. Twirl back in the bucket. Pulling to the top. Take him out. He walks on top, stays there without falling through now, and he is ready to go down the slide. So take our water. Lay the cup gently down here. And here we go. We made it! Ta-da! Very wet hair now. Let's give him a little bath. There is a wet dripping hair. And our troll made it down the water slide. Now mine is not perfect. I'm sure you can make yours a lot better. But give it a try and see what you come up with. And remember to post your videos or pictures onto our Facebook page. And if you're doing Read Squared, the code word for this week is slide. So take a look at this, the PBS site that I showed you in the beginning for design challenges and next week i'll be looking forward to making ice cream with you stay tuned for more see you soon bye, -bye.